groups received two letters, one from the uh, CS in charge of ESC, indicating that uh, she is not in a position to attend uh, this session today for purposes of responding to the questions uh, directed to her ministry, and also the uh, CS in charge of health. Uh, she's also indicated that uh, she's in, not in a position to attend today's session for purposes of responding to the questions directed to her ministry. And therefore, we only have the Prime Cabinet Secretary uh, present today uh, for purposes of responding to the question directed to his ministry by the Nairobi City County Senator, Senator Edwin Sifuna. And therefore, for this session, we are going to proceed with the Prime Cabinet Secretary only because the two others are not present today. Prime Cabinet Secretary, let me take this opportunity to welcome you to the Senate, a place that we are extremely familiar with. Welcome this morning. We are going to have a very heavy day, uh, honorable senators. And uh, I may limit even the number of supplementary questions that may be directed to the Cabinet Secretary so that we handle uh, the other heavy agenda uh, that um, will be laid before us. We expect a supplementary order paper as these proceedings will be ongoing uh, so that we prosecute other urgent matters. With that, I will allow the Senator for Nairobi City County, Senator Edwin Sifuna, to proceed and ask his question. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. As you're aware, over the period of uh, 16th to 31st of August of this year, I had opportunity to visit the U.S. Uh, with your kind support, Honorable Speaker. And during that uh, period, I had opportunity to engage with Kenyans living in the U.S., in the cities of Chicago, Seattle, Washington, D.C., and Houston. And it is the genesis of these questions that I've posed to the Cabinet Secretary for Foreign Affairs out of my interaction with the Kenyans and including our diplomats at the Kenyan Embassy in Washington, D.C. Honorable Speaker, unfortunately, as I speak, I have not received the hard copy responses, but I hope the Secretariat is making arrangements. So I'm not aware whether the, the CS has actually put in written responses. But uh, these are the questions, Honorable Speaker, and I will read the three of them. I, I'm sure that the CS can answer all of them at once. The first question to the CS, is could the cabinet secretary indicate the staffing levels by CADA at the Kenya Embassy in Washington, D.C., and the two Kenya consulates in Los Angeles and New York, and outline the roles of staff serving in each CADA? Secondly, Honorable Speaker, could the cabinet secretary explain how the staffing levels have impacted the operational efficiency of the said diplomatic missions? and clarify whether there are any plans to deploy additional staff. Lastly, Honorable Speaker, could the Cabinet Secretary also explain the delay in the issuance of national identity cards to Kenyans residing in the U.S. and state what the Ministry is doing to resolve the issue? I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Prime Cabinet Secretary, you may proceed to respond. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, Mr. Speaker, first I would like to state that uh, the hard copy has been released. Maybe it's just a delay uh, to get to you, but it has been signed. Uh, on uh, the first aspect of his question, um, to indicate the staffing levels by CADA at the Kenyan Embassy in Washington, D.C., the two consulates in, uh, consulates in uh, Los Angeles and uh, New York, and 
then outline the staff, the role of the staff. I wish to say that in the hard copy, in the response I've given, I've tabled the details uh, of the home-based staff, uh, indicating the authorized, the impost, and the variants. Uh, I've done the same also for the other agencies. Uh, that is the defense attaché, the education attaché, foreign relations officer, trade attaché, and immigration. So in total, there is uh, an indication, we indicate that uh, the authorized is 17, but we have a deficit, we, uh, and the authorized, the impost is 14. So there's a variance of three. Uh, I've also indicated in the permanent um, uh, UN mission, um, I've also indicated that there is an immigration officer attached there uh, as, to handle the consulate services. Mr. Speaker, sir, I, I have also attached the details of the Los Angeles, again on the same principle, the authorized, the impost, and where there is any variance. Um, clearly, uh, on the LA, um, both the authorized and impost tally, that is a total of seven, uh, as it stands now. I have also tabulated the responsibilities uh, of all these officers. Um, Mr. Speaker, it's a long list. Uh, so uh, perhaps it may be necessary for uh, the Honorable Senator to uh, perhaps seek any clarification on on one or two issues after he looks at that. The second aspect is about the efficiency. Uh, explain how the staffing levels have impacted the operational efficiency of the said diplomatic missions and clarify whether there are any plans to deploy additional staff. Mr. Speaker, definitely staffing levels have a direct influence on operational efficiency by affecting workload distribution, response times, and the overall capacity to manage diplomatic tasks. Therefore, low staffing levels may occasion service deliveries uh, such as delays in processing uh, visas when we are doing the full angle of visas, but we still do it on a limited basis because, as you know, we are also a visa-free uh, country now, but there are still some uh, areas that uh, require visa processing. We have uh, aspects of managing communication and executing policy initiatives. So definitely, it is absolutely essential uh, that uh, proper staffing levels uh, are in situ to avoid uh, delays. The third aspect that uh, I will touch to is the issue of the delay in the issuance of national identity cards to Kenyans residing in the United States of America and what the ministry is doing uh, to resolve this issue. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I would like to point out that the Ministry of Foreign and Diaspora Affairs serves as a facilitator coordinating the issuance of ID cards through the immigration attaches in missions abroad. In this case, identity cards are processed at our embassy in Washington, D.C.